Alright, after a little bit of technical difficulties, mainly me introducing a different topic that we were not prepared for, <laughs> we are going to be doing our right topic for this podcast. But first, who is joining me? Mike. And Travis. Hey. There we go. We got the timing correct this Sweet. time. So now for the actual topic that we're going to do, we are going to be doing uh, more of a generalized topic again. And it's actually going to be on game difficulty. And if we're talking about game difficulty in general, especially when we remember it as a kid, maybe if we start to look at some of the older games for the NES, for the Super Nintendo, we have examples for this, and we're talking about how they were really difficult, about how maybe if they were, even if they were shorter, they would take us a lot longer to beat than, say, a game would for maybe the Wii or for the PS3. And just the kind of the trend about game difficulty just kind of becoming easier to beat. And maybe the fact that, like, a game might not be as hard to beat, whether it's good, whether it's bad, Either way, that's our topic for today. So to start us off, the, t- the first question, or I guess generalized question, just to get everybody thinking is, what do you think about the trend that these games are going now? Do you agree with the fact that they're going easier, even though there are games like Dark Souls that still want to destroy you? But, or do you think that it's kind of a bad thing that it's making the games, anybody can beat the games? I don't think it's so like, I, I don't know. I think it's kind of a bad thing. But, like, I guess okay. it depends what era, because, like, the 80s, I feel like, were way too hard. I think <laughs> games back then were able to be harder because they were shorter. You know, you can have a game be hard when it only takes you 30 minutes to beat the game. Like, Castlevania, for example, is extremely difficult, but if you get through without dying, you'll beat the game in 20 minutes. Whereas, like, games today, you can't have, I don't know, like, Skyrim be as hard as that, because Skyrim takes, like, 40 hours to beat. And so if you had to go through 40 hours that frustrated, it would suck and like if you lost all your lives in skyrim you had to start the whole game over like that would be impossible so oh yeah that'd be absolutely terrible yeah i think the fact that games are getting easier i don't know if this is the reason why but i say it's probably because games are just getting longer and so the consequences of you know a game being hard are greater because if a game is too long you know you can't make it as hard anymore at that point if that kind of makes sense so that's kind of how i feel about the trend at least Okay, well, Travis, think about it. If we had to restart Xenoblade Chronicles, oh, God. Oh, my God. I don't know God. what I would do. I would. Yeah, like, if you could only die three times and had to replay it, like, oh, that'd be ridiculous. That would be the worst. You couldn't You you couldn't even learn the system at that point. No. So, I mean, okay, yeah, so I agree with you, Mike, on that, but, I mean, I don't necessarily, like, I, I agree with you. I guess it's more of a bad thing than a good thing. Um, but at the same time, I don't think that it's necessarily, like, inherently a bad thing. I mean, you have these difficulties, especially when you talk about, say, games like Kingdom Hearts, games like Mass Effect, games like, um, uh, games like, I can't, I can't think like of Like RPGs. Now. I had it written down. I can't find it. Yeah, or I guess, like, Bravely Default. You have, uh, certain, uh, game settings, and you certainly, I will bring up Bravely Default again, Mike, by the way, because I do want to mention a part about that. <laughs> but you have games that have different difficulties, difficulty settings, But overall, I feel like it's getting easier. But it also could be the fact that we're getting older and we see it as being easier. I will mention another game that we actually have played uh, recently at the time of recording this. But it's... I do want to hear a little bit more of your guys' thoughts about that. What do you think, Travis, about this uh, recent trend? Um, I guess not recent. Let's see. I've definitely recognized it too. But I can... Like... Because I always like going back to my, you know, nostalgic games anyway. So, like, games that I thought were hard back then, I pretty much... I'll still think they're pretty hard even though like I know every in and out of them by now and then like games uh, coming out today they're just like so easy and straightforward like even puzzle games I feel like are becoming a little less you know clever in how you have to go about solving something so mm-hmm. I, I, would, I would agree yeah so cause like uh I know when I started playing the Paper Mario, like, I'm pretty sure I haven't died yet, and I can guarantee you I am not good in battle settings, because I rarely (laughs) ever get perfect, like, battles ever. Yeah. And I feel like I should have probably been destroyed by now, but I still haven't, Mm -hmm. because it's easy. That game is just straight child's play. Yeah. Yeah. Is there no is there no difficulty settings on that, Travis? Uh, I don't recall one being there. Do you remember, Mike? It's been so long that I've started. I don't think so. It. I don't think a- I don't think any of the Paper Mario games have ever had difficulty settings. Okay, I was just making sure. I mean, I don't. I de- Paper Mario sixty four and Thousand Year Door 
definitely didn't. But I don't think they even needed them. I mean, mm -hmm. I know, like, you can make it harder if you want, but especially if you're talking Thousand Year Door, you can talk about going into the Pit of 100 Trials, and that would be a lot more hard. And I remember I did that Pit of 100 Trials, and I got pretty dang far, and I was over level for the rest of the game, but I mean, like, you can make, you can make like, side missions in there that could make it more difficult. Mm -hmm. But if we're talking from going on there, another big one, obviously, that I'm a huge fan of the series is Fire Emblem. And Fire Emblem has a has those game difficulty settings, but I'll be honest, they take it to the extreme. Yes, they do. Like if we're like if we're ta if we're talking like uh, say the more recent games that have come out for the 3DS, if we're talking Fire Emblem Fates, and I'm starting to run on um, on lunatic mode, and if we're seeing like if we're talking games that are some of the like the hardest games that I've seen played, lunatic mode classic classic Fire Emblem mode. Lunatic, lunatic difficulty for Fire Emblem Conquest is probably some of the hardest that I've seen. So, I'm kind of... Because there are still games out there that can give you the settings that can give you that challenge, but it seems like a lot of games don't really necessarily want to give you that challenge anymore. They might give you a, a difficulty thing, but it doesn't really translate as well as you would think it does. I mean, I think, Travis, you played the Call of Duty mode and you had some trouble with veteran mode, right? That's just because grenades are just absurd. There's like, <laughs> there's a drastic difference between, um, cause immediately after we beat the veteran, uh, world at war, we went back on easy mode. I was literally standing in the front line where everyone was spawning and I wasn't even getting hurt because it was just that easy. And then like, even the step below veteran, it's like very, very easy just because you're not constantly running out of cover. Okay. So it's like so I mean so you so you've experienced that kind of so you've experienced that kind of like difficulty switch. So that leads into the question that I was planning to ask is is this a way to technically alleviate this whole difficulty settings or do you kind of think that it's I don't know a cop out? Cuz in my mind I think it's kind of a cheap way to dodge the issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that especially cuz like Call of Duty's way of doing it is just they're just going to throw a bunch of grenades and you kind of have to just know where they're going to do it and then know where you can run next. So you basically have to die 50 times and then figure it out uh, like at one of the hard spots. Whereas, at least I don't know because I don't play uh, what what game we've uh, Sacred Stones, whatever. Um, <laughs> with the uh, brutal mode, it's at least like it's going to be that hard the entire time, and it's like the same strategy to it where you can kind of like figure out a way to grind it out. I, I don't know how different it is, because, like, I know I killed one of the main guys on the normal mode, because I yeah I'm, I like to just face the bosses, because I, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm doing the, I'm doing the lunatic mm -hmm. run right now, right. but it's pretty hard. So anyway, before I go on, Mike, what do you, I want to make sure I want to get your thoughts on this, too, about, like, do you think it's a cop-out, do you think it's good, do you think it's bad? I on this hate different? it. I mean, you hate it. Okay. I I think it's dumb. Well, because like, the lunatic thing you said for Fire Emblem and the veteran thing for Call of Duty, I think is just almost laziness in a way, because that's what I'm thinking. The only thing they're doing is making enemies stronger and maybe adding more enemies in some games. It's like, yep, that's exactly like it. that's not to me. Okay, yeah, you're making the game more difficult, but that's that's like a cheap way to make a game more difficult. You know, oh, let's just put more enemies on the screen. Oh, let's just make their weapons stronger. It's like, I want to give a shout out to a game that I think did this amazingly, and that's Persona 5. Because the enemies in that game are not hard because they're just stronger than you. They're hard because they have different attacks and methods. So like, no two enemies in the game fight the same. And you have to kind of learn the enemy's tactics by like... Sometimes you have to talk to the enemy, which is kind of crazy. Like, have a conversation, you kind of learn the personality of an enemy. Or like, during a boss fight, you kind of see the attitude and the different attacks they do, and you have to adjust and figure it out, and if you can figure it out, you're golden. You know, the level doesn't really matter as much. So, mm -hmm. I like that. You know, it doesn't just say, all right, we're gonna make harder enemies. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. we're just gonna throw a different style of enemies at you and see if you can figure it out to keep you on your toes. I think that's smart difficulty to me, but. I think I like that idea too. So I'm gonna also say this. I think you're gonna both love and hate parts of Bravely Default because of that, because they, they do think of some kinds of systems there. But then even an additional question, I'm not sure if you noticed, Mike, Bravely Default also, and this is a little bit of a spoiler, but it also has the option to adjust the difficulty level in the game. Yeah. So you say you start out on hard, you go really want a challenge, you can't figure out a good system, and then you want to change it in-game. What do you think about changing it in-game? 
I mean, I, I think it's good just for convenience sake, you know? Because, like, it would have been nice if Travis had that when he played Spider-Man on his stream. Oh, <laughs> oh that's my true. god, That's yes. absolutely oh, true. In <laughs> cases like that, that I think it would be fight, useful. That was... Regrets were made. <laughs> that was hilarious. Okay. Well, either way, so what I want to say here is that when we're talking about these games, in Fire Emblem, they have a, I think in Fire Emblem Fades, and I'm not sure if they had an Awakening, I don't think they did, but they had a system where you can adjust the difficulty, but you can only adjust it going down. So if you started on hard, because you wanted that extra challenge, but you can't get through a map because maybe you lost a unit or something like that, and and you really need that unit to, to progress, especially if it's if you're talking about Ryoma, because Ryoma's freaking crazy good. Mm -hmm. So there's an option to lower the difficulty, but not raise it back up. Bravely Default has it in a way where you can adjust it whenever you want, up or down, left and right. You can adjust the encounter rate too. Mm -hmm. I want to know your guys' thoughts on that as well. Because personally, this is just me, I love that system. I love yeah. the fact that you can change the difficulty in the game where it's just like, hey, maybe I maybe I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm at a high enough level. I know the strategies to beat the boss. So instead of going through this dungeon and being stopped every five seconds by an enemy, I can just turn the enemy game counter off and then go right back to when I'm probably around evenly matched with the enemies. And if you're talking to even a, even a game that does something similar to Earthbound, one of the things that I loved about Earthbound, if they knew you were going to be an enemy and you're high enough level, you don't even have to fight them. And you can still get the experience and everything. And it's not going to help you in the long run just to keep defeating them, because you have to defeat other enemies so you can get more experience to keep leveling up. Yeah. That's one of the thing, uh, things I loved about Earthbound and Bravely Default. They both had these systems that they incorporated in what I think is almost perfectly. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, those kinds of difficulty settings can easily bring people away from the game. And at the same time, um, even, though it, even though it might help fix the whole difficulty setting, which was kind of our original question from the start. Yeah. So that's another thing I want to ask about. What do you think? I mean, it's good in general, you know? I think, like, to have it is good, you know, like we said, for convenience. I don't like it personally for myself. If you want to beat okay. the game on hard, beat the game on hard, you know? Mm -hmm. I think it's cheap if you're like, I want to try to beat this game on hard. Ooh, but this boss is too difficult, so let me lower the difficulty. Because then in my head, yeah. that whole run is not authentic anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. if you want to say you beat it on hard, beat the whole thing on hard. Which is why... Yep. You know, I, I think that's good because in Kingdom Hearts, when I was younger, I really wanted to do that, lower the difficulty, but it didn't give me the option on one of the bosses that yeah. I just couldn't beat. So I just had to grind it out, you know? I had to gain more levels, learn the strategy for the boss, and beat it. And looking back on it, I'm so glad that I did that because then I was able to beat it authentically without saying I had to cheese it and lower the difficulty of the boss. Mm -hmm. So, and it's well, I guess, an authentic win. Yeah, which is why... You, honestly, I think it makes you feel better, too. Right. Like, you feel so, so much guess, more accomplished you know. if you beat it at, like, the highest difficulty. Exactly. So that's why, like, I feel like it's, you know, it's good to have just in case, like, you misclick or if you're really, really struggling. But I don't know. I don't think it's something that should be used. And I don't think that's, like... It's good to have. I just don't think it's good to use, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I think... I kind of like that option of... Uh, because I'll be honest, I don't like difficulty settings either. I, I mean, I think it's nice to have as an option, mm -hmm. but personally for me, I think it's uh, I think it's a cheap way to get out of it. A cheap way to get out of the whole difficulty way. Because the last thing I want to say about this whole game difficulty thing in general, when we were streaming once, me and, uh, me and Pat were trying, so for people who haven't played Donkey Kong 64, you need to get the rare coin and the Nintendo coin to face the final boss, to beat the game. Mm -hmm. And to get the rare coin, or to get the Nintendo coin, you had to play the original Donkey Kong. Like, you go into this arcade area, you have to play the original Donkey Kong, and you have to beat it twice. Mm -hmm. So you have to beat the 25, 50, 75, and 100 meter one, so there's four different levels, and if you die once, you start back at the beginning. That's so weird. Me and... It's so weird, the fact that that's, <laughs> that's part... And you have to beat it twice. Yeah. On the second time, it's that's a harder difficulty. crazy. And the way me and Pat beat it, mainly me, because Pat gave up after a couple tries, not not this, not Pat, that's just what happened if you watch back at the stream, but we cheesed it. We used save states because we had it on virtual console. Yeah. I don't understand how any of these people were, were going to be able to beat it as an eight-year-old. Yeah. And personally, I don't, and I'll, this is just me, I, have, I had no problem using save states because of the fact that I knew over time I would eventually get it. Right. But it's just like, especially for the sake of stream, I don't want to, I don't want to have them see the same crap over and over mm -hmm. and over again. Yeah. So it so don't believe me, whatever. I'll do I'll <laughs> try it again, the original Donkey Kong. I don't think you guys really care, but I'm I want to hear last thing I want to hear, I know this one's a little longer. I want to hear your thoughts on that because that obviously that, that was a cop out. There's no way around it. I, that was a cop out, but it's something that we did for the sake of time. 
Right. So do you think that's another? That was like what I was thinking. Do you think that time might have an issue with all this difficulty too? People are having less time going to work. All the gamers are are older and whatnot. So maybe they make the game easier just because of the fact that they might not have as much time to figure it out. When you're a kid, I guess you have more time. I don't know. But that's just what I'm thinking. Yeah. No, I mean, and you know, it's like we said at the beginning with, you know, just the fact that kind of goes with the fact that games are longer these days. So, you know, yeah. you can't just, it's if you get stuck on a boss for, you know, you can't get stuck on a boss for two days anymore because if a game's like 40 hours, that adds up so much. I think, you know, yeah. with the example I used earlier, like Castlevania, it's okay if you get stuck because the game as a whole is 20 minutes, you know, if it's easy. So the difficulty is what makes it, you know, a five, six hour game. But I just don't think mm -hmm. it... I feel like difficulty used to be used to make a game longer, but I don't think that's needed anymore. So and so you know. they're not doing it, yeah. Right. So I, I agree with what you're saying. I think the easiness, you know, helps with that. So I guess in that sense, it's a good thing. So I get that. Okay, Travis, closing thoughts. My closing thoughts. Um. Basically, it's a shame that, like, because there's such a balance that you need to do between having it be too hard or too easy. Because if it's too easy, you don't get any enjoyment or thrill out of actually accomplishing anything and then obviously if it's too hard you, you don't beat it and you just get really really pissed off like that some people do that um so travis and spider-man yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> um so like finding that delicate balance because i know uh diablo it has the option of lowering the difficulty if it's too hard for you but you can't make it go back up in game you have to log out and then like go back in in adventure mode and then what i really liked in diablo 2 is um you like beat the whole game and then you're able to unlock the next difficulty you can use the same champion so then you can get better items but then everyone's a lot stronger and then it just did that three different times and then hell mode was just freaking impossible it, it is so so hard so mm -hmm. like i liked how they did it in diablo 2 because there was only like one difficulty for the most part because like once you went to the next one you couldn't go back you were stuck there yeah. so you still had to like grind it out and figure out like okay where can i go to kind of gain some levels and get some better items so then i can actually advance whereas diablo 3 I mean, I am already pretty much like a complete set person, being basically as much damage as I can do already, and I only, uh -huh. the season only has been open for like a couple days. Right. So it, it's just wow. stupid, because you can get everything so fast, and it's just not hard, which is why I like Diablo 2 so much more. Because I don't think I even mm -hmm. have a set item in Diablo 2, and I played that one for years. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I guess we said everything, if you guys are good? Yep, I'm yep. good. Alright, thanks for joining us. Again, uh, give us a topic uh, in the comment section below if you think of anything. If not, let us know what you think about game difficulty and the whole trend nowadays. Because it is such an interesting topic and we would love to hear your thoughts on yeah, it. So, and we love yeah, reading comments. Nice... It's our favorite. Yeah, yeah, and we love reading comments. Have a nice day. Aw, thanks.